Yesterday, I sought off a large explosive device, and today, I'm going to the moon and Mars. Using rare resources found only in these two locations, I can make better tech and weapons, which should come in handy because some weird things have been happening to the wildlife back at home. But I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Oh, but you know what I should be worried about? Parasites made it to Mars before I did! This might be a mild inconvenience. Oh hey, look at that, I've got a Parasite quest book tab now. Speaking of better weapons, I need to visit a nuclear crater biome and then a swamp biome so that I can get an energy sword. To get to the biomes, I'll be making and flying an F-22 Raptor, which I can do now since it's the space age. Here's my fighter jet. Lastly, I need rockets. I could make Radaway since I'm going to a nuclear crater, but... Eh, nah, Radaway's for casuals. Yes, I've completed the first quest in the Parasite chapter. Is that a good thing? While I'm here, I'm also gonna blow up that military outpost that I found in the last video. Uh-oh, I think I might have needed right away. I'm so intelligent. Fun fact, golden apples will remove around 20 rads when eaten. Of course, uh, right away removes 300, but it's still better than nothing. Okay, I've got to go back or I'm literally gonna die of radiation poisoning and that would be embarrassing. Give me all of the golden apples right now. By the way, if you're looking for a server to play on using this mod pack and you want to help support the channel, then consider joining my Patreon server linked in the description. Big shout out to all my patrons, you guys are awesome. Or, if you're looking to host your own server, consider going to biasechosting.com slash speedyt and using code speedyt for 25% off your first month of hosting. I don't think anyone is surprised by what I've got to do today. Uh huh. Back I go, this time with Radaway. Oh sick, a rocket launcher. All this tech guns right away dropping from these item crates is just taunting me because I can't use any of it. Parasite quest number two is uh, visit the swamps and get the energy sword. What the fuck? Life lesson, don't fly your F-22 Raptor into a black hole because uh, it won't transport you through time and space. It'll just break. Oh great, and there's a blood moon tonight as well. Lucky for me, I kept my old propeller plane in my backpack because, hey, you never know when you're gonna fly into a black hole. They're lurking everywhere, you, you just never know. Swamp located. I'd like to point out that the explosive ammo used by this World War II airplane is significantly better than the explosive minigun ammo in the modern fighter. 10 out of 10 realism. Oh, look at that thing. That's not good. There's actually several of these things around here. Oops, I messed up the age locking with this color of energy sword. I'll fix that in a sec. You probably realized by now, but these videos are literally my playtest for this mod pack. It'd be pretty stupid of me not to upgrade all my tools to Tritanium. Unfortunately, there's no Tritanium multi-tool. For the sake of my sanity, I've also put up signs for my blueprint wall. Gotta remake my plane as well, which I have now done. Oh, nice, they made the energy sword durability accurate. 
My guy, why are you in my factory? What can you possibly hope to accomplish? Well, I guess it's time to go to the moon. Yay, I went to the moon. Roll end credits. Ah, uh, if only it were that easy. To go to the moon, I need three things. A rocket fuel. Uh, wait, a rocket fuel. Why did I write that? Uh, a NASA workbench and a rocket in that order. Yes, I want rocket fuel before I have a rocket because it'll take a while to make lots of rocket fuel. Making it is a multi-step process involving several distillation towers, although my new method of rocket fuel production is probably just as unrealistic as the old one because I have no idea how rocket fuel is made. But before I can do any of that, I need more power because I'll be adding two more distillation towers to my grid. Behold, the gas turbine! Similar to the steam turbine in its power output, the gas turbine consumes gasoline or diesel instead of steam to generate power. The best part about this turbine is that it outputs flue gas, which you can stick in a heat exchanger to turn water into steam. And guess what you could do with that steam? Well, I could put it right back in my steam turbine. I'll be able to get double the power generation with the same amount of diesel I'm using now. Or at least I will once I mess with some recipes. Hmm. It seems a little counterintuitive that the heat exchanger needs electricity, but at least it's working, I guess. Only it's not making steam quickly enough. Let me go solve that. Okay, I've moved my steam turbine and made a second heat exchanger. Now we should see enough steam being made for the turbine. And there we go. Let's get to making rocket fuel. I need to place down a bunch of concrete to prepare the area and also craft up all the blocks for two distillation towers. Luckily, it's mostly just iron sheet metal. Here's tower number one. It inputs gasoline and outputs naphtha and a small amount of napalm. What? I said it wasn't realistic. And here's tower number two. Now I need to get all these different fluid outputs where they need to go. And this is why we have fluid routers. As you can see, the naphtha is going into the second tower and producing rocket fuel. Here's a tank for the napalm because it's the largest fluid byproduct. While my rocket fuel accumulates, let us begin work on the NASA workbench. This recipe is the hardest of any I've had to make so far. The worst part is that we need three computer engineering blocks, which will take four processors to craft. And we all know how fun it is to make processors. Oh, and I need elite plating, which takes crystal binder, which takes calcium sulfate, among other things. Calcium sulfate for crystal binder is made in several machines, all of which I've made at least once before. Firstly, I need to crush granite to get a mineral powder for one of the other ingredients in the crystal binder. I can make the first tier of circuit engineering block thingy. The next tier needs advanced circuits, so I've got to wait for those now. My granite has finished crushing into whatever this is. Woo! Advanced electronic engineering block! Step 2 done! Anyways, calcium sulfate is made by crushing diorite into fluorite, then making fluorite water, then combining that water with sulfuric acid in the chemical reactor, and putting the output into a crystallizer which gives the calcium. Oh, and this process makes a crap ton of hydrofluoric acid as a byproduct. Not sure what I'm going to do with all that. Guess I'll stick it in a big tank for now. Might need it later, you never know. Calcium sulfate is kind of automated, so now I can make crystal binder and elite plating. Hmm. I'm wealthy enough to afford three stacks of advanced electronic alloy, which is good because I need lots of it for processors. Not that I'm gonna subject you to watching that crafting process again. Although I do need ink sacs, so I'm always need ink sacs. It's just a mystery to me why I haven't just added a black dye recipe yet. Well, it'll be in the next update. Oh, look at the rabbit! And the ferret! I don't think I've even seen a ferret before in this mod pack. I think I'll take the rabbit home. Although, I don't want to put it near my living areas, because there's so many hazards like wires and radiation. I'll just put the rabbit in this nice field over here. That honestly might be the only happy ending to any animal I've ever interacted with on this world. Currently, there's four stacks of transitors crafting for the processors, so I'll work on making an elite solar panel for an EMC energy collector thingy. The main reason I want that is because it can allow me to get glowstone automatically after a few steps. Okay, yay, 27 basic solar panels. Yay, soon to be 9 advanced solar panels, 3 DU solar panels, 
Not sure what that stands for, but okay. And now I've got to melt arsenic and boron to make boron arsenide. Here's a bunch more precision tools, and now all I'm missing for the NASA workbench is the computer engineering blocks. Immersive engineering is too realistic! My wire is overloading and burning! Again! The capacitor solved the problem. Yet another chemical reactor. Boron arsenide for the elite solar panel. Glowstone for the EMC collector. And the last thing I need for the collector is a space-time equalizer. Sounds simple, right? It's mostly just tritanium, which I already have. Gotta make tritanium plates, though. Oh no! Tritanium plates need compressed dash, which is only found on Mars. I should have looked at that ahead of time, but uh, I guess I won't be making that now, will I? I don't really have anything else to do while I wait, so I guess I'll just build my basement. Actually, that's not quite true. I noticed that I have to complete this quest where I make four different planes in order to unlock some of the space-related quests. Guess I'll get started on this. It's really just a ton of aluminum and steel plates anyways. Finally, my processors are ready. These computer engineering blocks are all that's left for the NASA workbench. For my rocket, I need a hefty amount of compressed steel, brass, and aluminum, all three of which are made in part with compressed titanium. So I'll be needing an electric press, presser thingy. I also need to burn this piece of low enriched Californium 249 fuel in order to make a Californium RTG for the nose cone of the rocket. Making the first four pieces of compressed steel is very expensive. Yay, electric presser. First thing to make with this machine is compressed titanium. I keep wanting to say titanium, they're very similar. And since I don't have a lot of titanium, I need to move an excavator to a titanium vein. Oh great, I found a fake glitched resource vein. That was pointless. I'll come back to that. Here's my Californium RTG and my nose cone made with plating from a questbook reward. Wow. Here we go, lots of compressed titanium and compressed bronze on the way. I found another titanium vein, but it's under my greenhouse. The obvious solution to this predicament is to put my excavator above my greenhouse. Heck yeah! Using three types of compressed metal, all made with titanium, I can make tier one rocket plating. Here are my rocket fins and my rocket engine. That's actually all I need to make the rocket. Behold, a tier one rocket. That finishes up the three major things I need to go to the moon. Now for the minor things, mainly including a spacesuit and oxygen equipment. First off, I need thermal armor because uh, apparently it's slightly colder than 75 degrees Fahrenheit on the moon. Now for the spacesuit. It needs quite a few different materials, most notably radiation and pressure layers. I'm taking a brief break from the suit crafting to go make some item conduits because my auto smelter is backing up. Conduit binder needs crystal binder, which is the main reason I automated the hard parts of it. Anyways, here's the rest of my pressure layers, so now I can make the suit pieces. There's yet more equipment I need though. There's uh, oxygen gear, a parachute, a frequency module, and oxygen tanks. To fill up my oxygen tanks, I need an oxygen collector and an oxygen compressor. Perfect. I also need a circuit fabricator for making wafers. Gonna need that fuel loader as well. Not going anywhere without it. Actually, I'm gonna need two of them. Rocket launch pads might be useful as well. Man, after all those zombies, I really need a turret here. And I've got just the perfect spot for a turret. Right over here, defending my launch pad.
Indeed, I would like to make a space station. Okay, very cool. Now, if I launch... Oh, oh shoot, this isn't where I wanted to be. I, I just went right back home accidentally. Let's try this again. There's my space station. I must have missed it the first time and accidentally just clicked the wrong button. Uh, I think my shaders aren't compatible with Galacticraft. Um, we'll be right back. Much better. I can actually see now without getting a seizure. This here is just the default Galacticraft space station that you start with. You can add onto it with your own stuff, which I'll probably do eventually. I'd like to make something only possible on the space station in the mod pack, so you have to go to it for progression. There's not much for me to do here at the moment though. By the way, do any of you know how to make landing pads stay put when you launch a rocket? I made enough pads for three locations, but they keep breaking and coming with me when I launch. Heck yeah, it's good to be here after dozens of days of hard crafting. Well, I suppose this will be my temporary launch site, but I'm here for two things. Lunar Sapphires and a schematic for a tier 2 rocket. Lunar Sapphires are found deep underground, but can also be crafted from moon rock and terrestrial sapphires. They can even be found in an excavator resource vein found only up here. Since I don't need that many of them at the moment, I'll be going caving. Oh great, the day counter is different when you're in space, that's annoying. Ah, jeez, or that's what I really came here for. I had you all fooled. That's a good start for now. Might want to get some more later, but a dungeon is a higher priority. Lots of lunar villages around here as well. The alien villagers all sell the same things for varying numbers of lunar sapphires. They even will give lunar sapphires in return for jungle tree saplings. I think I'll villager nap one of these guys and take him home in case I want to get sapphires without coming here. Oh, fallen meteor, I forgot about those. Yeah, <laughs> there's a third thing I need from the moon, uh, and that thing is meteoric iron, which is used in a tier 2 rocket. should probably try to collect some of that before I go home. And you can also find meteoric iron in lunar dungeons. Ah, well, look at that. That didn't take too long. See, there's some of that iron. Oh, uh, now I have to fight this clown. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness, it's not a moon buggy schematic. Just thought I'd get a few more of those before I leave. For the time being, I've got everything I came here for. I'll be back later to collect some more meteoric iron at some point. But I'm ready to go start crafting some fancier technology and weapons. Hey buddy, would you like a lot of jungle saplings? Because I have a lot of jungle saplings. The first thing I'm going to make with the lunar sapphires is the scar. It does more damage than my current rifle and it has a scope. Most of the gun parts are made from obsidian steel with the exception of the hardened receiver. That part uses some carbon stuff. And there we go. I know we just went to the moon, but I need to begin planning and prepping for Mars because that won't be a walk in the park like the moon was. Firstly, I'm bringing one of my excavators there to mine Desh and Meteoric Iron. Secondly, there's parasites there. <laughs> in other words, I need lots of power generation on Mars and heavy defenses. The first step towards heavy defenses involves making the Igneous Extruder, which needs a machine frame. Conveniently, I can make machine frames now because I have Lunar Sapphires. I also need Duraluminum plates. Duraluminum? Not sure if that's a real thing, but okay. Here's my machine frames. Now to use one of them for the Igneous Extruder, which handles lots of recipes using water and lava. The recipe I'm most interested in is that of producing obsidian.
That's not a noise I want to hear. There's only one thing that creates thunder and lightning like that, and that thing is a tier 4 parasite beckon. One of the most powerful parasites. Oh no, as I feared, there's an infestation underground next to my base. I had my suspicions with all those death messages appearing and weird noises, but this is much worse than I expected. It must have started before I had fixed the cough effect early in the video. I'm not off to a good start. Anyways, I'm gonna go make a backup of this world in case it hits the fan and these guys take over. Okay, I'm back now. And it's time for battle. will adapt to various forms of damage and become immune to them if given long enough. But you know what they won't adapt to? Fire and lava. You know, I also have a lot of napalm sitting in a tank. Maybe some firebombs would be useful. Here goes! Oh, what the heck? Why did it put the fire above ground? That's really lame. Didn't do anything. No, this is not the time to reload! <laughs> Apparently there are two stage 4 beckons, although one is almost dead. Wow! Burn, you small stage one clowns. At last, I've managed to kill most of the parasites. All that's left are a few stage one beckons and a lot of infested blocks that I need to clean up. Good thing I can make 3,000 durability titanium pickaxes because this is a lot of vein mining. But I'm happy to say that the parasites are no more. No mobs remain and the infested blocks have been destroyed. All that remains is a giant pit. Now I can get back to what I was doing before the infestation, which was trying to automate obsidian. Obviously I need lava, so I'm going to make a melting crucible to melt cobblestone into lava. With a little bit of power, in the grand scheme of things, uh, and a cobblestone generator, I have infinite lava. Now to transport it where it needs to go. All of the intelligent people are laughing and pointing right now at what I'm doing. And it will come as no surprise to them that the lava stopped going through my fluid ducts. Oh no! My lava's leaking! Who could have predicted this? Clearly not me. 
eventually I remembered that I uh, need hardened fluid ducts for hot fluids. Another reason I want lava is so I can make lots of carbon mesh things which are used in advanced combat armor. Yep, I'm finally ditching most of the engineer's armor in favor of the buffs like speed and knockback resistance granted by high-end tech guns armor. I'm still keeping the old boots though. I really like not taking fall damage. Whoa, I just got another star from a loot box. I was thinking of making an anti-gravity device in the near future, and that just got a whole lot easier. Since I'm switching chest plates, I can't use the capacitor backpack anymore. Instead, I need to use something called a flux capacitor, which turns out to be much better in the amount of energy it can store. I wonder where they got the name and design from. Here's my igneous extruder, and oops, it looks like it's bedtime. Obsidian is used in a lot of crafting recipes, and it also happens to be one of the very few blocks even the biggest parasites can't break. Okay, maybe the ancient forms can break it, but I don't have to worry about those at the moment. And I'll be needing a lot of obsidian so I can make my bunker on Mars entirely out of it. After spending 10 minutes fighting with item ducts, I've resorted to item conduits, which are better in every possible way, and now my obsidian is going in a drawer. In order to mine resources on Mars with an excavator, I need to get fuel there and items back here. To do that, I'm going to make color-coded linked ender chests and tanks. These allow for interdimensional logistics. However, they each need a shifting star to craft, which means I need more star metal. I can make star metal with a linking tool and iron ore now, but I need a linking tool. And it's daytime. Shoot. Guess I'll make more oxygen machines. Yay, now I can make my linking tool. With this thing, I can link floating crystals in an abandoned structure to iron ore and transmute the ore into star metal. I like that I can use a dainty quartz grindstone to double this magical star metal. Or I could just put it into an industrial crusher and double it that way. <laughs> Of course it's daytime again, so I still can't make the stars, but I can make world spikes, which are chunk loaders, and will keep part of my base loaded while I'm on Mars, so that my resources keep getting sent between dimensions. Shifting stars. And a pulverizer to pulverize ender pearls to help make the void powder fuel for the world spikes. And here's my linked ender chests and tanks. I'm going to be building a second gas turbine and bringing it to Mars, since it's one of the simplest, dense forms of power generation available to me. All it needs is a diesel input via linked ender tanks. Somehow, I'm making so much power at home that my high voltage power lines are burning up now. This might be a small problem. To compensate for two gas turbines consuming diesel, I'm making a magma crucible to melt the bitumen byproduct of my current oil processing back into more crude oil to make extra diesel. Of course, it's creating a different type of crude oil though, and I don't know how to make liquids unify automatically. Looks like I'll be building a fourth distillation tower. It might be a good idea to begin working on a tier 2 rocket if I'm going to get to Mars sometime this century. The tier 2 rocket is very similar to the current rocket I have. The main difference is it needs some tier 2 plates which are made from tier 1 plates and meteoric iron. It also needs two boosters, which are made from meteoric iron. I need six more pieces of meteoric iron, so back to the moon I go. I could sit around and wait for asteroids to crash nearby, but that would take too long. Instead, I'm gonna gamble on finding another moon dungeon and having it have enough meteoric iron, uh, at least six pieces. I'm gonna hope that's faster than asteroids. I mean, hey, it'll be more fun at least, and I'll get some extra loot. Let's go, I finally found a notch apple, and it only took 700 days. Wow, there's even a mending book here as well. That'll come in handy. And a moon buggy schematic. Probably will never use that, but okay. Tier two rocket acquired. So I, uh, I have the capability to reach Mars right now, but there's more stuff I need like lots of weapons to defend my mining operation against parasites. I made an emplacement turret a little while ago, but I tore it down because I didn't really need it here. I think a good place for it would be on Mars though. I'll be bringing that with me and setting it up with an auto cannon turret. In addition, I'll be getting several smaller turrets armed with sniper rifles shooting incendiary rounds. 
I'll bring some player operated weapons like a machine gun and lots of rockets for my fighter jet as well. Oh no, you don't! Conveniently, I have quite a few machine gun magazines from Request Book Reward. I'm going to need a lot of blaze powder for my incendiary ammo. These snipers are pretty similar to the scar in their crafting recipe. Time to start on auto cannon ammo, which is a lot more complicated than just me putting some metal ingots in the ammo press. First, I need auto cannon shell casings made from brass. That's my first problem as well. Brass needs zinc, and as zinc isn't automated yet, I'm off to find a zinc vein. Or more specifically, a smithsonite. Smithsonite? One of, the, one of them. Uh, one of those veins. Now to move an excavator here. Now that I have zinc coming in, it's on to the next step. The projectile workshop. This multi-block takes in various metals and makes bullet cores out of them, among other things. Oh no you don't. No more! I'd like to make auto cannon shell cores, thank you. Yes, I want armor piercing. So you stick in some nuggets, in this case uranium, and get out a core. Now I need a filler multi-block. Pretty much all it does is fill empty casings with gunpowder. Very cool. Once you have shell or bullet cores and casings filled with gunpowder, you have to assemble the two pieces together in an ammunition workshop. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like items can be inputted here. Guess I'll have to do it manually until I can figure out where the input is. After all that effort, I have one autocannon shell. I'm gonna need a lot more of these. And I need another machine, one final machine, known as the Packer, which takes those loose shells and loads them into a magazine. I still have to make the magazines, though. <laughs> Holy, whoa, I'm getting really lucky with my loot box rewards this video. Here's the first autocannon magazine being loaded. I'm not even sure how many shells it uses to fill one mag. Apparently, it's 16. Also, it's important to note the autocannon loads four magazines at once since it has four barrels, so you need 64 shells to fully load the turret uh, one time. Good thing the quest book reward for the autocannon quest gives eight autocannon mags. I had to get yet another crate because all this ammo doesn't stack very much or at all. Well, I have almost everything I think I'll need. I'm just missing a few random things and some food. One of those random things is a flamethrower, a different kind than the tech guns one. This flamethrower is made in the American Weapon Box and has a much longer range and higher damage. Oh shoot, I almost forgot to bring leaves for my oxygen collector. Apparently putting down leaves next to this machine on Mars or elsewhere magically creates oxygen. I might want to make a lava moat, so I'll take some of this. I'm ready to depart, and at the last second, I decided to bring a lot more obsidian than I planned originally. Here it goes! Ah, there they are. That right there is a node. Given a small amount of time, that thing will create and spread a massive parasite biome. So, I don't really want to live right next to it. Oh hey, I forgot about these things. The little Martian slime pet thingies. These guys are cool. Sorry Charles, I don't have any baked potatoes for you at the moment. I found a nice spot between two hills where I think I'll put my bunker. Oh no, I forgot to bring proper lighting again. 
My torches don't work until I uh, can manage to create a sealed area with oxygen. I get really mad and frustrated watching this park back because this is where I break five of my storage crates and only pick four of them back up. The one I didn't pick up contains most of my ammunition. You can even see it sitting on the ground right there in this clip. I just didn't notice it because it floated away when I mined it. Here's my gas turbine. Just need to start it up now, which is actually a bit of a process. Obviously it needs fuel, but it also needs a high voltage wire connected to one side and a medium voltage wire connected to the other. The high voltage input needs power until the turbine spins up to 500 RPM, at which point it stalls until you remove the high voltage input. That's not good. <laughs> now that I have power, I can try to collect oxygen and seal this place. Looks like leaves have to be placed two blocks away from the oxygen collector to work. Oh great, the sealer doesn't have enough oxygen and the room is too big and or unsealed. Uh. Okay, I made a smaller secondary room and finally found a way to get power in here while keeping the room sealed. I am realizing though that there's something called an airlock, which might be useful if I had it. Oops, I forgot to claim this quest earlier. Oh no, here come the parasites now! Here's when I finally noticed I was missing a crate. The crate containing my small turrets, machine gun magazines, and most of my autocannon magazines. To make matters worse, these will stop being sent through my ender tank for some reason. No, Charles! Well, the diesel problem seems pretty obvious in retrospect. The world spike wasn't loading the pump jacks that were producing oil, so once the diesel in the tank ran out, nothing was replacing it. This can be solved with adding uh, more world spikes. I suddenly have way less ammo than I thought. I'll do what I can to make more now, but there isn't much time. At least I found out how to auto-collect the output of the ammunition workshop. Earlier, I forgot I was going to bring a mortar with me, but I can make that now. I also have the opportunity to make some airlocks and bring the non-torch lighting this time. Well, it's day 700. I'm not quite done yet though. Airlock installed. Gas turbine back on. Machine gun ready. that oh no what is that run away Gotta be kidding me. Auto cannon ready to go. Direct hit on the note. Okay, cool. I did the stuff I wanted. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Take care. Bye.